So let's talk about what we're going to be doing for today. So our learning tasks. You're going to download the Hurdle Task 1 Year 8 Geography document and a copy can also be found in the Resources tab. So you can click on this link here and it opens it up as a PDF or a Word document. And what you're going to do is download it by clicking on that little download button that can be found in the right hand corner. Now I want absolutely everybody to download it right now because we're gonna download it and work on it together. So we're gonna work on it during while we're all in here. So I want everyone to go to the, their Compass um, lesson plan and download that hurdle task. Now for, if for some reason that uh, link doesn't work, a copy can also be found in the resources tab. So if you go to resources, term three geography, and then hurdle task one year eight geography, if you click on that, you'll be able to download the file. Also, we are going to be looking at the work that we did over lesson one and a little bit of lesson two. So if you need help understanding any of the um, concepts that we've already looked at, because that's what we're gonna be getting tested on in the hurdle task, I upload the PowerPoint lessons that we do after we finish them into this folder here. So I've got the lesson one PowerPoint there and the lesson two PowerPoint there. So if you want help during this hurdle task in order to find the answers to the questions, you can use those PowerPoints to help you. So I'm gonna just check. Can you give me a thumbs up reaction either in person or over the um, Zoom reactions just once you've downloaded that file for me? Okay, so most people have it, good job. Um, Sahara Afra Yasmin, are you downloading yours? So I'm just gonna wait for you three to tell me that you've uploaded, downloaded yours and then we can get started. So Sahara's got hers. If you need any help finding the, the document, let me know. Afra Yasmin, have you downloaded yours? Afra has, Yasmin, have you got yours? Alrighty, so now that you've all downloaded that year eight geography um, hurdle task, you can see when you open it up, it looks like this. So we're gonna click enable editing so we can write in it. And first and foremost, you're gonna write your name and your class. So you might, I'm gonna choose the first person I can see, Afra, eight B, perfect. So our instructions for today is this hurdle task, for this hurdle task, you're gonna use your knowledge from week two, so last week, to complete the following hurdle task. Now, this is really important. Make sure that you write in your own words and do not copy from the internet. It's very simple and very easy for me to see when someone's copied from the internet. You will receive an N if you copy from the internet. All the information that you need is either in this document itself or you can use the PowerPoints, like I said, the lesson one PowerPoint urban explosion on the resources page to help you answer it but I don't wanna see anyone copying from the internet. I had someone do it in 8A and I made them redo it in order to get an S. So if you don't wanna to have to do double the work, start off by writing it in your own words. Now you can use chapter 5.1, page 126 to 127 in your textbook to help you answer the below questions. Or like I said, that lesson one PowerPoint has all the information from that chapter in there, okay? So part one that we're all looking at together. I want you all to have your Word document open so you're reading along with me. Our key fo focus for this part one is it's a source analysis. You're gonna be identifying things and describing things. So we've got three sources here and we've already looked at these three sources together when we did lesson one. So if you were here for lesson one, then you already have a lot of this background knowledge that we already have looked over, okay? So source two, we have 1950, New York was the world's largest city with a population with just over 12 million people. Then we have source three, 1990. Tokyo's population reached 25 million, making it easily the world's largest city. Then in 2030 for source four, based on current trends, New Delhi is expected to be the world's largest city by 2030 with a population of over 40 million people. So those are our three sources. So here's our first question. It says, compare the photos above of New York, Tokyo and New Delhi, which is sources two, three and four. So for the first question you're answering, what are some features 
common to all three cities. So if you're looking at these photos, what are some features, what are some things you can see in this photo that are similar across all three of these large cities? What are some features? Remember when we looked at lesson two, we were talking about different features that um, cities might have. How do they use their land? Do they have a lot of buildings? Do they have a lot of people? Think about those sort of things to answer this question. Um, yep, Adam, you've put something in the chat that would be correct. So you could write that in your one there. Now, for the what are some features common to all three cities, you could write, you could just list the features that you see. Further down on this document, you'll see there's parts where it tells you how many sentences you have to write. But if there isn't sentences, it means you can just list things, okay? Alrighty, Abdurrahman, did you just join us? Yes, miss. Alrighty, hi Abdurrahman, I'm glad you came to class. Now, what I need you to do, Go to the lesson plan, download the Hurdle Task 1 geog Year 8 Geography document, and we're completing that together now. So I can't, you know, I need you to go and do that now and let me know when you've got it downloaded, okay? Either in the chat or over the microphone, okay. tell me once you've downloaded it so I know that you're ready to go. So hopefully everyone has written a, a few things in this box here. Like I said, I really want you all to make sure that we are doing this work together in order to make sure that you get it done by the end of this period. Joy, you can totally write that. That is correct. She wrote, asked in the chat. Okay. Sorry guys, just got out of the thing. Alrighty, now that you might have written a couple of things about that, so looking at those three photos, what can you see? What's similar? What are things you can see that are in each of those photos? Then we have a question B. So it's saying, in what ways have large cities changed between 1950 and today? And you can see here that it's asking you to write one to two sentences. So that means for this question, in order to make sure that you get a pass, you need to write in full sentences, one to two sentences. You can't just write one or two word answers. We want sentences, full sentences. So in what ways have large cities changed between 1950 and today? This first photo is in 1950. So it says New York was the world's largest city in 1950 with a population of over 12 million. In 1990, Tokyo became the world's largest city with 25 million people. And in 2030, they're predicting that New Delhi will be the biggest city in the world with a population of over 40 million. So for this question, maybe talk about what has changed? What's changed with the population? That sort of stuff. Or what has changed in what it looks like? Miss? Yes, Yasmin? Um, could you give us like an example? Well, I can't give you the answer because I want you all to write something in your own words. But think about it. If we're saying in what ways have large cities changed between 1950 and today, we can see 1950 here, can't we? So we know we can talk a little bit about this one. You might think about what is the population of the world's largest city in, 12, in um, 1950? It's 12 million people was the world's largest city in 1950. Then it jumps up to 25 million in 1990. And by 2030, it's expected to be over 40 million. So write a few sentences about what's happening to the population between 1950 and today. All right, does that make sense? Did that help, Yasmin? Or is it, do you want me to explain it another way? All right, good. Sorry guys, the chat isn't coming up for me for some reason, there it is. All right, Abdurrahman, good. So you've downloaded the document. We've just finished question 1A and question 1B and I just explained what we had to do for those questions. So give them a go. Otherwise keep in, um, when we move on to the next question, just keep up with us and then you can go back and answer those questions at the end and I can help you with them once everyone else has gone, if you haven't finished them. Okay. Alrighty. How's everyone going? Would you like me to move on to the next question or would you like more time to write your answers for these ones? Just can you give us another more example time. of what has changed? Well, what do you think might've changed between cities in 1950 to today? 
you only have to write one to two sentences. So think about how much you can write about. You can write about the population. You could write about if the population is getting bigger, what do you think is happening to the city? If more people are moving there, what do they have to keep building? What do they have to keep doing? Hotels. Mm, hotel. Do people always live Apartment. in hotels? Yeah, things like that. You can talk about different things that might have to happen in order to make, uh, in order to allow more people to live in a city. Because if more people are coming, you need more things, don't you? Alrighty. I'll give you just one more minute to finish up writing those ones, and then I might move on to the next part. Well done guys, I really hope you guys are all working along with me because that's what's gonna make it so you guys can get that S. If we're working together, you know you'll get it done. If you try and do it by yourself, you're most likely going to not understand what the questions are doing or you're gonna stress yourself out. So I, I hope everyone is writing along with me right now. I wanna see everyone that's in here upload a document at the end of the period. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna move on to the part two now. So part two, the key focus for part two is data and source analysis. So you're going to identify and describe again, but from looking at data rather than just looking at a source analysis. So in 2007, something extraordinary happened. The number of people living in urban areas or cities, as we refer to them today, was greater than the numbers in rural areas. Since then, the number of people living in cities has continued to grow at a faster rate than in rural areas. This was one of the most significant change in human population trends. In Australia, around 90% of people live in cities. So the key vocabulary that we have for this next section is urban areas. So remember, urban areas are areas that are um, associated with towns, cities or suburbs. Rural areas are areas that are not urban areas, so they are more like the countryside, farming, there's not a lot of buildings, it's very wide open spaces. Urbanisation, industrial age, population and mega city. So those are things that you might use, words you might use to help you answer the questions later on. Okay. So question one from part two. Is saying uses source using sources two, three, and four from page 126 of your textbook, you're going to identify a few things. Now, the sources that they're talking about here are these three sources here. So you actually don't need to go to the textbook. You can go back and look at the sources that are at the top that we use for part one. So the source two of New York, source three of Tokyo, and source four of New Delhi. They are all the sources that you need to look at. Okay. So using those sources, you're going to identify which city had the largest population in 1950, which city had the largest population in 1990, and which city is expected to have the largest population in the year 2030. So I want you to go and have a read over those again and tell me you can just list the city that has the largest population in those years, okay? Now, like I said, I can easily tell when someone has Googled this answer rather than looked at the sources. So I don't wanna see people that have Googled answers because like I said at the start of the lesson, this is an S or an N task. So you need to get an S in order to pass this task and you will not be getting an S if you have Googled the answers. I will make you redo it to show me that you can write it in your own words rather than Googling. So if it's Googled and not in your own words, then you're going to be getting an N unless you fix it up. So don't start with doing that. Let's start with doing it as a, um, as already writing it in our own words. So you're gonna do questions one, one from part A, A, B, and C, and then I'll explain what D is as well. So these ones you're just identifying. Which city 
had the largest population in these years. So 1950, 1990 and 2030. You're just identifying those cities and it's in the sources above. Alrighty. All right, so now we are up to question D of part two, question one. So we've just done A, B and C where we've been identifying, we've just been naming the cities. Now we are up to question D. So question D is asking you to describe what population trends we can see from looking at the three sources. We know if it's a describe work question, it's not a one word answer. We need to use sentences. And it says here that you need to use one to two sentences to answer this question. So a trend is a pattern. So a trend is a pattern in data and that can be in a graph, it can be in some sources, it can be in a map. It is a trend, it's a pattern. So you're gonna look at these three sources, we're gonna look at them together and see what pattern can we see happening to the population, okay? Might have gone too far. So we're looking at a pattern that we can see that's happening to the population from looking at the three sources. So we'll start at 1950. The population was 12 million people in the largest city. In 1990, in the largest city, the population was actually 25 million. And then in 2030, they're predicting that the population will have jumped to 40 million. So what trend can you see? What pattern can you see happening each time? It's doubling. Yeah, or more than doubling. So good, Joseph's noticed that it's getting bigger, isn't it? It's, getting, it's jumping quite much. It's doubling or even more than doubling. So that's something that you might write about in that described thing. So like Joseph said, you might write um, from 1950, to 2030, we can see that the population trend is actually jumping and um, doubling by the amount of people that we have from 12 million to 25 million to 40 million. So Joseph might write that. And you guys can write something similar as well, as long as it's in your own words. My buildings. Pardon? My buildings. Now there are more buildings, but that's not really talking about with we're specifically looking at the population for this question. So the buildings would go in um, this one in question B for part one, but we're looking at just the population for this question, the population trends. So you wanna talk about just the population, what's happening to it. From 1950 to 1990, how many years is that? How many years between 1950 to 1990? We can do some maths. 40. 40 years. So in 40 years, the population has more than doubled in the world's largest city. So we can see 12 million was in New York and that was the world's largest city in 1950. And then in Tokyo became the world's largest city. They had 25 million people. So it more than doubled for in 40 years. How many years is it between 1990 and 2030? What do we think? 1990, 2000, 2010, Just they're all 40 years apart. They're all 40 years apart. So you might say every 40 years, the population almost doubles or about around about doubles the amount of people who are living in the world's largest city at the time. Okay, so you might talk about that as well. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of time in order to work out the A, B, C, and D. So write your sentences for that, and then we'll move on to question two. Of course, if you guys would like to move faster than what we are, you can, and move a bit further ahead. But if you're moving further ahead, I still want you to stay in this class and listen into what I'm saying, because you might, in the questions up, um, ahead, you might not understand exactly what you need to do and might need to go back and change those answers. So I'm gonna give you just a couple minutes just to um, finish writing that one. Alrighty, so now we're up to question two. So what are cities with a population over 10 million called? Now, we learnt about this in lesson one. Isn't it large cities? Nope, not large cities. Now there's Mega. a specific term that we use Mega and it's city. one of the ones that are in this key vocabulary here. And we learned about it. Mega city. Mega city. So a mega city is a city. I was about to say city. that. <laughs> a mega city is a city that is over 10 million people so it's a lot of people so we know when we look at these three um these three cities here new york tokyo and new delhi they are all mega cities because they all have a population over 10 million 
Melbourne is not a mega city. We don't have over 10 million. I think we're at like seven point something million people at the moment. Alrighty, so that's question two. Now what question three is asking you to do is to talk about or give me a definition to explain what is urbanization and urban explosion. And you're gonna write one to two sentences for each word. Probably just one sentence for each word really, but I put one to two in case you would like to. So to find the answer for urbanization, you can go over to the textbook. So you can use the PDF one that's in the resources tab or if you have your own copy. And if you scroll down to the um, geography, once it loads, I think that's stuff in there. There we go. Once you scroll down to the glossary, you can see for the, uh, we have the glossary term for urbanization there. So you can use that in order to answer the question. And you can use that because it's from the textbook, you can use that one. It's not just something that you're making up. So urbanization, what happens? What is urbanization? And you're gonna write that over there. Now, the term, uh, let me go back to the hurdle task. So you're writing the definitions for them. So urbanization, like I said, you can get from the glossary in the textbook. Urban explosion. Now that is also in the textbook and I'm gonna give you a hint. It's on page 127. So if you want the definition for urban explosion, it's on the page 127. So sorry, did someone have a question? No? Okay. Alrighty, now Jesse, let me just pause this here while everyone's working. All right, sorry for everyone that's watching this video. I think we had a cut out where we weren't um, recording what we were completing. So I'm gonna go back. I'm pretty sure we got up to, um, at least got through two and three. I'm gonna quickly explain them again, just in case we missed that because I forgot to press resume recording. So. What are cities with a population with over 10 million called? We learned about that in lesson one. You can go back and look at that PowerPoint on Compass, or I'll give you a hint. It's one of the words in this key vocabulary. I'm not gonna tell you which one, but it is one of those words. Then urbanization and urban explosion. You're gonna write one to two sentences for each word to describe it to me. Give me the definition. Urbanization, you can find in the glossary of the textbook. An urban explosion you can find on page 127 of the textbook. If you start reading that, um, if you read the start of that um, page, then you'll be able to find the answer to that one. Okay, so now we're on to trends in graphs. So a trend, like I said before, is a pattern in a set of results displayed in a graph. A trend usually shows change over time and they show the direction of change. So when we comment on the trend, we can discuss the overall direction of the trend. And I've given you some key vocabulary here that you can use to describe trends in graphs. So increase is increasing and the past is increased. Decreased means going down and that is decreasing as a past tense. You've also got rise, past tense rose, decline, past tense decline. And then you have jump, which is past jumped. And you would only use jumped if you're talking about something that's changing very suddenly. So if the data was going along like this and then jumped up really high, then it would be called, it would, you would say that the, the trend has jumped. If it's going from somewhere low and then it's going down and then if it's going like high and then drops down low, you'd say drop because it's going very quickly, okay? Now, for this question, you're going to look at the graph below and answer the following questions. So we can see that this graph is showing us the urban and rural population of the world from 1950 to 2030, okay? So on this axis, we can see that it's measuring the years. So we've got from 1950 to 2030, and it's going up in years. So 1950, 1955, 1960, 1965, 1970, as it goes. And then on this axis, we can see that it's measuring the population and we can see that it's measuring it by billions. So every number on here means a billion. So 1 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion, 4 billion, 5 billion, 6 billion, so on, so on. And then we come to the colors. So we can see that the green bars just by themselves, just the green bars are measuring the world total population. So that's everyone in the world. The red line, is measuring the world urban population. So that's the population that are living in cities, towns, and suburbs. 
And then the blue line is the world rural population. So they are living in the countryside and or on farms. So they're the rural areas. So we have three questions for this. So we have describe the world total population trend, use data from the graph to support your answer. And it says that we need to use two to three sentences. So I do not want anyone using the internet to find the answer to this question. You are going to use the graph to help you find that information. So we know if we're looking at the world total population trend, we're only looking at the green bars. And I would say looking at these, gra these green bars, the pattern that I can see is that it's increasing, isn't it? It's going up, it's increasing. And it's increasing every year. So every year that they've measured, it's increasing. So I could say, over the years, the world total population is increasing. I've just described the overall trend of the world total population. However, in this question, it says use data from the graph to support your answer. And I haven't used any data yet, so I'm going to do it. I might go. Let's see what it was in 1950. So if I look at 1950 on the graph and go up, I can see it's around, it's between the two and the three. So it's around 2.5. And I know that it's 2.5 billion. So I might write in 1950, the population um, was around 2.5 billion. And then I'm like, okay, so where have we gone to? 2030. Now, we obviously haven't got to 2030, so they're predicting that in 2030, the population, let's go up, would reach around, and I'm going to go across, around 8 billion. And it is predicted that in 2030, the population will reach around 8 billion. So that is how you answer that question. I've got two sentences and I've talked about the overall trend and then I've used actual data of the years and the amount of people to support my answer. Now you are gonna go do the same thing for the world urban population trend and you can do the exact same thing you've done here. Talk about what has happened to the red line? How could you describe it? Then give me data of where it starts and finishes in order to support that answer. And then finally, you're gonna do the world rural population trend. So you can look at the blue line. What's happening to the blue line? It's going up and then down again. How could you describe that? And then you're gonna talk about where it starts and where it ends, okay? So you should have two to three sentences for each one and you can um, model it around the answer that we've done here. Now, once you've completed all of these questions here, you're gonna save your Word document. So make sure you save it. Then you're gonna go back over to Compass and you're gonna find where you're going to upload it. So you're going to go to learning tasks. You're gonna go down to term three humanities remote learning hurdle task one source analysis, and you are going to make sure you upload it the, um, into here. So mine looks different because I'm a teacher, but you would have a little button up here that says actions and it has a green plus on the side and you are going to upload it there as a file upload and make sure that it comes through to me by Friday at 4 p.m. So term three, humanities remote learning hurdle task one source analysis, Friday at 4 p.m. If you have any questions about it, if you need any help, you can email me by clicking on this link and then we talk through our Hume Central email. So if you email me through here, you need to make sure you're going to your Hume Central email in order to see my response, okay? Well done to everyone. I wanna make sure you all get those S's and I think you all can if you put in the effort, okay? So I'll see you all next week. Bye.